Damn it! This news is a total lie! I'm alive! But how? Don't you think that's weird? I agree! I mean, I like super agree! This is extremely weird! Why do I have to let some crazy person who attacked me earlier follow me around and call me her big sister? That's so mean, big sis! Desko didn't attack you! In fact, this is the first time Desko has ever met you! Huh? Now I'm even more confused! I've heard of love at first sight, but sister at first sight? Nuh uh! Not gonna do it! But, but Desko is your. Shut up! Nobody cares! They killed me off without my consent! Doesn't that bother anyone? Nope. However, I don't like how they're burying the truth about our Lord's successful rise. The news reports state that all of the rebels in Hades were executed by the task force. There's nothing in here but lies. Hold on! More importantly, look at the second line of this article! They spelled pretty wrong! It says primy instead. What is going on here? As a pretty instructor, I cannot let this travesty slide! So you're more concerned about a typo than falsely reporting that I died? It's hard to believe that the Information Bureau would make such a careless mistake. They pride themselves on reporting the facts. The Corruptorment must be using the Information Bureau to alter facts to their advantage. What should we do, my lord? We must invade the Bureau and bring them under our control! They will correct this typo! Bring them under our control? Are you stupid? That's impossible! It's located in a low-level demon area, but the Corruptorment uses the Bureau to control and regulate the flow of information. They're like the CIA or MI6. They've got intense security, and besides the staff, only the highest officials are allowed to enter. So that means you can get in there, right? Of course I can! Who do you think I am? Then we don't have a problem. This is our Lord's command. Take us there, Rascal P. Coltrane! Watch your mouth! I'm the President's son! I'm way more powerful than you are! That's even more of a reason for you to go. Seeing you alive should be more than enough proof for them to correct their false reports. I see. You're right! I can prove to them that I'm still alive! Fine. I don't have a choice. Sir Death and Maisel will take you there! Okay, then let's get going, to become the Netherworld President! Desko will kill everyone that gets in her way of becoming the final boss. Desko will make you proud, big sis. I'm not your sister! With each of their hopes in mind, the new party's very first operation was underway. Episode 4, Death in Easel's Death. That's right, ladies and germs, I'm back. Luminaire is back on the scene, ready for some more Disgaea 4. Terribly sorry about the long hiatus, I know quite a few of you have been eager and um, waiting for the next installment and believe me I have been more than willing to provide it to you but the case has simply been that um, I've been away I've been in Japan for 10 days or so with my dad a uh, great trip by the way if you've never been to the country I think it's something you should look into as it's quite quite a nice place um, Originally, like I said in a previous installment, I had worked there for a year teaching English to elementary students in the Kyoto area. Um, probably the one of the best experiences of my life. Highly endorse it. Um, and close to the end of my term in March, uh, my dad was supposed to come visit and tour a little bit of the country with me. But for those of you who didn't know, there was a although most of you should, there was a pretty big earthquake at the time, about a week, 
prior to when I was set to leave back for America. So uh, that kind of ruined um, our travel I'd, our travel plans. So as a result, I simply came home a little bit ahead of schedule. And after months of some deliberation and some planning, we finally decided to head back since he really wanted to see it and I did not mind going back at all. It's my home away from home after all. And it was a damn good trip. We, uh, we hung out in Kyoto for a while, visited Nara, um, tried to go to Mount Fuji, but there was a typhoon while we were there, so um, we had to skip our single day excursion there. But then we headed back up to Tokyo, spent a few days there, headed up to Nikko, which is where Shogun Ieyasu is, bu is uh, buried, and some really nice shrines in the area. A uh, really great, really great trip overall. Um, so I had a lot of fun, and that was the reason why I could not make any more updates. Believe me, I wanted to, and every, um, wherever I had internet available, I would check on the progress, and I would get some comments or messages from people like, Oh, when, when's the next um, this installment of this guy for, dude? I, like, totally depend on you. You're my savior. Not quite to that extent, but, um... Uh, you know, it meant a lot to me. I, I, I was I was glad to know that some people really look really looked forward to the next installment, um, and you know, it motivates me. I, it really makes me want to try much harder to put out more content for you guys. It, it makes me happy. And truth be told, I only arrived back in the states about five hours ago. It's nine o'clock currently. Of course, to me, um. On Japan time, it's like uh, 8 a.m. And I only got about two hours of sleep on my 13-hour flight. Yeah, so I'm actually I'm a little surprised that I'm even making this commentary whatsoever. But I... You know, so many people were really looking forward to this. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll, I'll pull it out. You know, I have enough to talk about, so... Um, so yeah, uh, I, I've been meaning to do this, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling quite energetic right now for whatever reason. Um, I'll probably crash in an hour or so after this, but, um, yeah, last we left, uh, let's talk about the game more, Disgaea 4, what you're actually here to watch. So if you haven't been noticing, um, new chapter, Measles dead. But wait, no he isn't. Oh wait, they think he is. Well, we gotta set this straight. That's the... That's kind of the theme of this chapter. But we got a new character in Desco! Yay! <laughs> uh, Desco is... Probably my favorite character af after Valvatoris in this game. Maybe even Tide, I'm not sure. Thunderk is quite cool too, I gotta admit. I, I think he makes a good pairing with Valva Torres. Uh, Yuka, I did not end up liking as much as I thought I would. I thought she would be a lot funnier than she is. But she's, she's kind of annoying with the whole dream thing. It's like, it's a goddamn dream. It's not a goddamn dream, bitch. You're dead. Face the facts. But, any whore. Uh, new chapter. So, as you saw, I just walked around, checked out the the new text that the guys had to say, making sure I got some good equipment, you see. Power uh, A bit better for Fenric. And right after this, I'll get into the new chapter. But I have, um, you know, I, I leave some of the, I left this part of the chapter in simply because I know a lot of people want to see one, what the monsters say each chapter. Also, I wanted enough time to explain my situation as to why I haven't been... This is why I haven't put a new episode out in, in over a week. And the other... No, that's that's primarily it. Although, I'm looking at the commentary. I still got a good... Five minutes until the chapter begins. Um, so you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll get started early. Um, I figured... As a treat to you guys, I will read the review for Valvatoris himself. It's about time I did the main character, isn't it? 
so while I'm upgrading my equipment and passing shit in the Senate and whatnot, uh, let's go over Valvatoras, the main character of the game. Valvatoras is a heavy hitter that has lethality written all over him, and how. Though only decent for base defense and general survivability, Valvatoras has offensive abilities and several attack skills that are quite good. As he reincarnates, his stats go up dramatically, making him one of the best damage dealers in the game. End quote. As now I am speaking. Um, yes, this is something that I should have capitalized on during my playthrough, yet I did not, um, as you will notice. But, um, you should reincarnate your main characters as frequently as possible. Why? One, it only costs 100 mana every single time. Two, all your aptitudes gain a 5% increase every single time, up to 5 times. So you can increase your aptitudes by 25% in every category for only a total of 500 mana. That is pretty sweet, and need I, I don't think I need to remind you how important aptitudes are. Um, so while it is, uh, while technically you do want to abuse the character world and increase their aptitudes and movement and critical hit rate and stuff like that every single reincarnation because you only get to go through the character world a certain amount of times depending on your each reincarnation um, you could uh, moderate it a bit throughout your playthrough yet in a sense if you just rush through five reincarnations really quick you will be oh so much more powerful than you would be otherwise. Not to mention, with the increased aptitudes, your equipment bonus will be that much better, and you could level back up to where you were very quickly, if there is a good level up map. And while I haven't shown it yet, Chapter 5-2, the chapter after this, is actually a pretty good, decent uh, leveling ground, thanks to some Experience Plus panels. So, I would say when you get up to that chapter, if you're playing this by yourself, that is the time you should start to grind and reincarnate your main characters a few times. I, I, I can't even begin to tell you the difference it'll make having that in, having 25% increase in all aptitudes across across the board. I, I wish I had done it during my playthrough, but you know, for whatever reason, the thought just did not occur to me. Oh yeah. And um, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to pass the bill for the legendary tree, which is, um, you know, if, if you don't have, if you don't read the forums or if you don't have the guide, you'd kind of miss the importance of this, uh, evil of this group. Uh, basically, see, I, I couldn't figure out how to use this for a while, but after you place it, whoever you make the leader can form special relationships with other characters um, after performing set number of actions. Um, and the reason you want Valvatoras to be the leader of this group specifically is because you will, um, this is how you earn a lot of the extra epilogues of the game, which is required for trophies if, if you care about that kind of thing. But there is also some uh, other tangible benefits. For example, uh, to get the, uh, you can form a comrade relationship, and if you want the, um, Fenric's epilogue, you need to become comrades with, with Fenric through the legendary tree. To do this, you have to set Valvatoris as the leader, walk up to the tree in the campaign board, press X, and set Fenric to comrade. Afterwards, if you perform ten, uh, team attacks with him, you will become comrades, and your team attack uh, rate will increase to 99%. Pretty handy, right? And there are a bunch of other features, others which include um, heal adjacent ally by 10% when you stand next to them, or uh, I think one of them was you use any of their skills or magic. Uh, magic from anywhere on the board so you know there's there are some tangible benefits but 
that's the main reason, in addition to the epilogues, if, if you want to see those. Which I plan to eventually get and upload if someone hasn't beaten me already. Um, but yeah, that, that's the important of the legendary tree. Something that could easily be overlooked, but I just wanted to mention real quick. Anyway, back to Valtorres. Um, uh, one of the best damage deals in the game, right. This is compounded by the fact that many people give him good positions for the Senate Advisor Panel and also make him a prominent member of evil symbol groups. It isn't required, but it's a common choice and one that frequent, frequently bears fruit. The traditional choice is to equip Valvatoris with a high-end sword. If you're using him heavily, he should get upgrades before any other sword wielders and let his old weapons trickle down through the groups. You know, kind of like uh, the Republican strategy with economics. Uh, Bloody Battle and Absorption are the easiest ability choices for Valvatoris, his two secondary abilities. He's also a powerhouse if you put him in the Heart Cannon group. The bonus attacks help him tear down even the biggest threats. Yes! Yes, 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 and yes! Remember the Heart Cannon? God, Valvatoris already does a lot of damage. Um, but just put him in that group and... Bosses become a joke, almost, with that ability. Anyway, uh, preferred weapons is in Sword and Spear. I gave him a sword. Obviously, as you notice, Spear... Uh, you know, the area effects are kind of weird, and you frequently reposition yourself, which isn't recommended because Fenric reaches his highest potential when he is close to Valvatoris, and if Valvatoris is a move that removes himself from his position, it's not going to be that great. I mean, spears do increase your defense, but swords, overall, pretty balanced and do damn good damage. Alright, let's see here. Starting aptitudes are HP 110, SP 110, Attack 130, Defense 110, Intelligence 100, Resistance 110, Hit 120, and Speed 90. Uh, overall, pretty damn good across the board. But reincarnate him five times, and he'll get, and he'll have um, plus five percent in every category, giving him a grand total of HP 135, SP 135, Attack 155, Defense 145. Sorry, 135, Defense 135, Intelligence 125, Resistance 135, Hit 1. Uh, 45 and speed 115 big difference between what it was before don't you agree all right uh, basic ability is bloody battle increases attack by 5% for each enemy defeated so if you're going to solo a map Valvatoris is a damn good character to choose because every um, enemy he kills he gets that much stronger second ability is physical boost uh, learned at level 20, it adds 50% damage to all special physical attacks. And because all of his um, natural uh, special attacks and sword skills are physical anyway, those all receive the 50% boost. Absolutely teach this to him right away. No reason not to. Oh, and um, I'm, I'm about to go into the item world, but I'm going to skip that and just show you the next chapter. So I will see you in a little bit after the dialogue. Um, big Sis? Aren't you excited to see what kinds of enemies we're gonna have to face, Big Sis? Hey, seriously, can you stop calling me Big Sis? Huh? I mean, I wanted a little sister when I was younger. I really can't accept having some gross-looking monster for a sister, even if it is just a dream. <laughs> Desko's so sorry for being so gross, Big Sis! Desko is glad that we finally got to meet each other! Desko will do her best to become a final boss, so please don't hate her! Hey! Oh, come on! Why are you crying over this? Stop it! You're making it look like this is my fault! But it is your fault! Yeah, no matter what angle I try to look at it, 
I'm pretty sure it's all your fault. What? Is everyone blaming this on me? She's the bad guy here. She attacked... Stop right there! I don't approve of this! Uh, what? We must unite as one if we are to accomplish our goal of usurping the regime. It's a tactic that the humans call teamwork. As long as you belong to this new party, I won't allow any dissension among the ranks. Even if you hate each other, just get along. Even if we hate each other? Is there any point to that? Of course there is. You seem pretty confident. Fine. I don't want you to keep crying, so I give you permission to call me Big Sis while we're in my dream. Really? Gasco is so happy! But you have to swear absolute loyalty to me. If Big Sis says it's white, then it's white. If Big Sis says it's black, then it's black. Got that? If you follow this rule, then you can call me Big Sis. Okay, if Big Sis says that clothes are white, then Desco will go paint them all white. Good. I'm pretty sure this isn't how sisters are supposed to get along. Well, that's settled. Now, let's go invade the Information Bureau! If you consider this settled, all is for my lord. The Netherworld, a world supported by fear energy that is harvested from the human world. The demons here obey only one thing, power. They are divided into different areas, depending on their own personal power. Valvatoras and his party's first destination lies in the lowest level of the Netherworld. It's an area inhabited by demonic weaklings and lowly peons. It's been a while since I've smelt the foul air of the Netherworld. The sounds of screams echoing in the distance, the blood-soaked ground, the warm air, oh, those sweet memories. Yes, the first time we met, during the Golden Age, when my lord reigned over this world as its tyrant. This place hasn't changed a bit. Ugh, enough of this sappy crap! We need to hurry up and correct the false news reports! Desco, listen up. If you want to keep being my little sister, you need to act more girly. Girly? But Desco wants to be a final boss. Yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that you're a girl. I don't want to have a tomboy for a sister. Uh, uh, okay, then Desco will be girly. Good, then let's start with skin care. UV rays are your biggest enemy. Make sure you're careful about that, okay? Yes, Big Sis! Desco thought that heroes were her only biggest enemies, but Desco will add UV rays to her list as well. What the hell are you two talking about? So this is it. I heard they went through quite a transformation since the last time I've been here, but I didn't expect this. <laughs> Its appearance isn't the only thing. They have the most advanced security system that was designed by the Science Bureau. No matter how small or strong they are, no demon can crack their security. It's pretty much impossible. Even if that demon is a final boss? They still couldn't do it. Have you heard of the Angel of Avarice? She can't even get through here. The Angel of Avarice? Who is that? It's a name that was given to a thief who apparently is an angel that steals from major banks and wealthy families. An angel thief? Ugh, what has the world come to? It's a good thing this is just a dream. The human world is definitely on the verge of its final corruption. Celestia must be going broke, since few humans have faith these days. Anyway... We successfully made it through the security system, which even that angel couldn't get through. And it's all thanks to me! Huh. Feel free to thank me all you want now. However, how is a dead person able to get through such tight security? Does anybody else see some contradictions here? Yeah, 
but I'm not dead. Soon, everyone will see that I'm still alive, and everything will get all ironed out. Uh, uh, please wait, everyone. A final boss can't walk so briskly. It's one of Desko's weaknesses. Sneak, sneak. Oh, are you a primmy? Uh, yes, I sure am. I, I mean, yep, dude. I'm on the sap here, dude. So please excuse me now, dude. Oh, sure. Desko better hurry, too. You guys look rather suspicious. How did you get inside the building? Desko is not suspicious. She's just a girl who's training to become a final boss. Yeah, how could you accuse us pretty girls of being suspicious? Are you blind? I'm not a pretty girl. But I came here to complain about an article you bastards wrote. There's a typo! Fix it immediately! No, I'm just forget these idiots. Hey, take a close look at me. I'm Sir Death the Measle, the president's one and only son. As you can see, I'm still alive. Our orders are to eliminate any suspicious individual on sight. Everyone, get in position. Hey, wait, listen to me. I'm the Netherworld president's only. Nonsense. Our duty is to remove all intruders. It looks like they have no intention of listening to what we have to say. Damn it! What's going on? How could this happen? <laughs> Poor Measle. Also, Valvatorus, I'm not a pretty girl, but <laughs> he cracks me up. I am? Anyway, where were we? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, physical boost. Adds 50% damage to all special physical attacks. It, it's, it's only 800 mana. By all means, teach it to him. It will never not be useful, I promise. But his last ability, Absorption, could possibly be game-breaking in the post-game. And here's why. Absorb stats from defeated enemies. I think the... Um, every time you kill an enemy, you absorb either 5 or 10% of their stats. I want to say 10%, but I only have the guide in front of me and it doesn't confirm the, the exact amount. Um, but, but here's the thing. In the post game, when enemies have hundreds of thousands of stat points and you absorb 10% of those, per each one killed, Valvatoris can clean up. Not to mention, he gets the 5% five atten five attack bonus for each enemy he, he defeats already. This enables him to clear entire maps by himself. He, he, really, he really is a, a piece of work. However, absorption and uh, physical boost have alternating benefits. Um, Absorption really is more useful on maps where there are a lot more enemies and you're more inclined to use Valvatoris by himself. Uh, the Island World could be a very good case for this. However, in the story mode and for many boss fights where there are few, much fewer enemies, um, physical boost will more likely be beneficial overall. It will consistently provide the 15% boost, whereas Absorption only increases um, your stats by 10% for each enemy killed, and the stats of your opponents are kind of meager in the beginning. It's not going to make a huge difference. So I don't recommend using Absorption until well into the post-game. Um... <laughs> Doesn't that look painful? Um, yeah, uh, so... You know, you wish you could use both, but you can't. You're not a monster, so you have to choose between them both. Um, they're both quite useful, but uh, stick to physical boost for a while, 
learn absorption, and when you get far enough into the post game, uh, equip it instead, as it will benefit Valvatores immensely. He could clean up entire maps by himself with that kind of boost, depending on your enemies. Uh, his resistance is negative 25% fire, so he's weak to fire slightly. Uh, neutral to wind and 50 resistant percent resistant to ice. Uh, pretty average. As for his skills, we got Impaler Prince, which is what, as you've noticed, is um, a row of three that can hit two panels away. The damage is pretty low, but in the beginning of the game, it's nice to be able to hit from such odd angles and multiple enemies at once. Uh, it's pretty useful until you learn much better sword skills. Uh, his next attack is Bloody Hole. Later in this chapter, you will see it for the first time. Um, Bloody Hole only hits um, every adjacent enemy next to Valvatoris, so a maximum of four. However, due to enemy standard enemy position, you will normally only be hitting two enemies with this attack, maybe three. Uh, the power is also not that great. Um, it's honestly, it's a, e e even Impaler Prince is more useful for this thanks to the versatility. Uh, absorption. I I'm sorry. Bloody Hole is overall not something you're going to use much. And not something you can recommend powering up. Uh, specifically because there's some there's a character later that. I mean, frequently you want characters adjacent to Valvatoris. Fenric, for example, gets the boost to himself, and if you use Bloody Hole, um, you know you're gonna hit him. Same at the same time. There's a character later that increases adjacent male um, stats by 20%, Valvatoris being male. Um, you would typically put her next to him, but Bloody Hole, again, would attack her as well. To uh, many reasons why I don't recommend this attack, and eventually you'll see why. His last attack, Tyrant Flukeed. I can't tell you uh, The range on this attack is just... Stellar. Um, it has a star elemental effect. Um, it hits three panels directly in front of you, and then an additional five panels directly in front of that. So it, it can hit a total of eight enemies. Uh, the damage is better than either of his other two skills, but really it's the attack range that you're going to be using this attack for all the time. Uh, the SPUs at the base level is only 60, but uh, upgrading with mana once or twice, <coughs> excuse me, and you'll see a dra dramatic increase in power, but I do not recommend any further than that because otherwise the SP cost will become insane, and you're going to be using this attack a lot in the item and character world, I guarantee it. So for the main purposes of SP conservation, do not increase the the power of that attack too much. Um, but yeah, overall, Valvatoris. Uh, his abilities make him a great damage primary damage dealer. Uh, it's really only his last special skill that is uh the most useful. You'll be using primarily that and the latest sword skills. Uh, I find I like magic changing with Desco to him a lot because he already receives a bonus from said character you'll receive later of 20% and when you magic change with Desco you also receive the benefit of her ability which increases the allied which increases your stats by 20% poor ugh I can't even speak uh I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, that recycled arrow on those planes is just murder on your respiratory system. Uh, yeah, it would increase your attack stat by 20% per adjacent ally. So yeah. the compounded physical abilities make a very good pairing. Not to mention, um, Desco trans magic changes into a sword, technically. So you can use all of Valvatoris' primary sword skills in addition to his own special skills 
in addition addition to Desko's magic change skills. Uh, one of which, as I've mentioned already, Martial Transformer will probably be one of the more damaging single target attacks you will be able to do by this point in the game by far. Uh, so if they are a very good combo. Both are downright... I might, I might even say broke. Desko could be broken. Her abilities are just too good, and her area of effect attacks are insane. I wish all the other characters had area of effect attacks like her. But that's the main character. Uh, compared to a lot of the other main characters in the game, he's a lot better than Mao, if you ask me. Although Mao did have Vasa Erica, and that was a pretty nice attack. Um, Laharl. In the original game, abilities didn't exist, so he was whatever. Um, however, Laharl had, has pretty good natural abilities afterwards. Uh, Valtors is up there, probably, and uh, Adele's decent, too. I would say Valtors is one of the better main characters in the whole game. And thanks for watching. It's glad to be back. Ugh, they're strong. Shall we continue? Let's fight until we can come to terms. I can go all night if we have to. Hey, hold up! Stop fighting and listen to me! I'm the Netherworld President's only son, Sir Death the Measle! I'm the boss of all of you! Huh? A measle? I read an article that said he's dead. I even heard they already had the funeral. Funeral? No! That was rather prompt. I'm impressed. Henceforth, no one will believe your story now. They won't even have the slightest interest in it. Uh, what difference does it make if they're interested or not? I'm not dead! I'm still alive! Why don't you believe me? Why is it so hard to believe that the news was wrong? I don't know. If the president's son was still alive, don't you think they would have mentioned it in the newspaper? Uh, so you guys only believe what you read in the newspaper? <laughs> How big of a loser are you? They won't believe it, even when you're standing right in front of them. Are you really the president's son? Desko's starting to wonder. Shut up! This must be a mistake! Well, see ya. We have to go report the intruders to our higher-ups. Hey, hey! What? <laughs> they have complete faith in the news articles that were issued by the Corruptament. Have they given up the ability to view reality with their own eyes or to think with their own brains? Unfortunately, that's bound to happen to the masses. That's the reason information can be so easily manipulated. It's pathetic. Any source of information can alter the truth to their advantage, and conceal or change any news that's harmful to them. Any information that is floating around the netherworld nowadays can be overwritten by the Corruptament to their favor. Damn it! I'm not gonna stay dead! They will believe me! They will know that I'm alive! 